Last week, Amistad, the best tournament lake in the world. Yeah! 31 pounds, 31 pounds, 34 pounds. Huge limits and a giant at the end of the day clinches it for Ish Monroe. Come and get you some of that! Yeah! This week, another monster lake. Rayburn is legendary. Got it. The big names have gotten themselves to the top of the leaderboard. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Who will prevail today and be the last man standing at the Lone Star Shootout? Get you some of that! <sighs> Frightening. The Sitgo Bassmaster Elite Series Lone Star Shootout is presented by Triton Boats. Here we go again. The big ones just keep coming. Last week, we went massive on Lake Amistad in southwest Texas, and we are back again. More Elite Series action, this time from Lake Sam Rayburn for the Lone Star Shootout presented by Triton Boats. You take 100 or so of the best anglers in the world, you put them on the number one tournament bass lakes in the country, and you hit those lakes at the time of the year when the bass fishing is absolutely exploding. And we've hit it right for the second week in a row. Let's take you to Sam Rayburn Reservoir, about two hours north of Houston, Texas, Massive, over 114,000 acres of bass fishing here, and this is a lake that keeps kicking out and kicking out the big limits of fish, despite the fact that there are 300 plus tournaments on this lake each and every year. It's championship day, and we are down to our elite anglers, our top 12 who qualified through the first three days of fishing. Take a look at that leaderboard, and there it is, Greg Hackney, who was all over it last week at Amistad. Once again this week, $100,000 to the winner. Tommy Sanders here with Mark Zoni. You look at that $100,000. You look at that leaderboard. How can you not be just as charged up as last you week? You know what? Yeah, exactly. After last week, I'm finally getting my voice back, and I'm ready to blow it out again You're today. you stable now? Uh, well, not really. I got a lot of caffeine in me again, Tommy, but what's in my head right now is Greg Hackney. He's the one with the bullseye on his back. Everybody's after him. Kevin Van Dam was also in the mix. Huge last week. He's looking to do it once again, basically on a huge roll from last year when he won three tournaments, including the Classic. He's ready to get back Tommy, to Tommy, he's been on a roll for like 50 15 years, uh, Okay, I'll give you that. Exactly. Well, let's talk about the Toyota Rookie of the Year race. Coming into this event, Steve Kennedy owned it after Amistad. As of right now, Ohio's Bill Lowen has taken charge. Bill Lowen, the last time we saw him was in the Federation Championship earlier this year down in Florida. Another guy who's done kind of well down in Florida is on top today as well, Dean Rojas. The rules here, four days of fishing, a five fish limit each day. The most weight at the end of the four days wins the $100,000. This is it, folks. It's what we've been waiting for all week. Go out there and try and catch 25 pounds today to be happy. I can't wait, man. I love the opportunity. Everything's good. Weather's perfect. Nice, overcast, kind of dreary. We'll catch some bats. Dean Rojas, originally from Arizona, now makes his home in the state of Texas. If he could catch 25, 26 pounds today, he might be able to run down Greg Hackney and pick up his first tournament win since 2001. Take a look at his weights, though. Throughout the course of the tournament, he's been dropping each and every day. Let's track Dean Rojas on Lake Sam Rayburn. Gets at the takeoff and heads straight north up the lake. He's going to go just short of the Highway 147 bridge, make the last left into that cove. That is Julie Creek. And right now in East Texas, the spawn is still on. It's kind of the tail end of the spawn, but guys are going along the bank and visually looking for sight bass. Now, what do you see when this goes on? What happens is a male and a female, they come up real shallow and they make a nest. Now. The female is generally larger than the male, but they get very, very aggressive when this is happening. They do not want baits, you know, little bluegills, shad near that bed. What they'll do is bite it out of anger, really instead of hunger, Tommy. All right, Dean Rojas tying on the piece of white plastic there. Why is it that color? Well, and why is he throwing that particular The reason bait? he's using that piece of white plastic is he wants to see that bait himself, okay? Not really for the bass. He wants to know where that bait is at at all times. Every single bed has this sweet spot. It's about a two to three inch zone. When that bait gets in there, bang. One more thing to keep in mind, the weather's not supposed to get better today. It's supposed to get worse. So now, early morning may be the best time to make hay for Dean Rojas. If he can put 25 pounds in the boat, hey, he's going to be there. He's going to be challenging for the $100,000 first prize and the second win of this young season on the Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series. Yeah, I'm a troublemaker. That's the way to start it. Beautiful. Number one. We're coming after. I think we got the lead right now. We're like two minutes into it. 
that. Hey, guess what, Mr. Rojas? You do have the lead right now. You just shaded Greg Hackney. And if it's anything like last week, we're going to see that lead go all over the place all day long. Just as that came out of your mouth, T Naughty, look who starts dropping bombs in the first 45 minutes. Kevin Van Dam is going to regain the lead from Dean Rojas. Kevin Van Dam with a limit early. What's this guy doing? He's doing a specialty. He is burning the spinner bait, but the biggest key to right it, there. he's changed the size of the blades on the spinner bait to match the shad. The shad are spawning right now. Very critical to have the exact same size blades. One of the key things about this area right here is the river's right outside of it. It's got little ditches and drains leading into a big spawning flat, and the shad are up here spawning on these on the clay. It's kind of steep clay right here, and they're flipping in the morning. The bass, I've seen them bust in and everything. There's shad flipping right in there, and the fish are schooling. So um, I'm just looking for some of those bigger ones that are up there. I'm throwing a, a spinner bait, a straight king, uh, premier elite series with small little bitty blades on it because the shad are only about two inches long. Reeling it pretty fast, the water's pretty clear. Do a lot of twitches. Make that skirt flare. There he is. The earlier you win a tournament in this all new Elite Series, the better your year starts looking. Kevin Van Dam working very hard to make that happen oh, right better. now. As if Kevin Van Dam doesn't have enough wins in his pocket at this point in his career. Kevin Van Dam with the spinner bait working in the early hours on Lake Sam Rayburn. Take a look at that Van Dam. Our leaderboard has changed twice since we started less than an hour ago. Hackney's down to third, Rojas and then Van Dam. But when we come back, we're gonna see some things that may make your toes curl. It would definitely make Kevin Van Dam's toes curl. To look at this one more time. Oh, oh no, no! Point. And Rojas is taking us frog yeah. fishing today, baby. Yeah, look at that. The Sitgo Bassmaster Elite Series Lone Star Shootout is presented by Triton Boats and is brought to you by Sitgo. Triton Boats. Toyota. And Mercury Marine. Sitgo Bassmaster Elite Series. This is the big leagues of bass fishing. Stop number two of 11 regular season events. The Lone Star Shootout presented by Triton Boats. We're here on Rayburn Reservoir in Southeast Texas. The man on top of the leaderboard now, he just snatched the lead away from Greg Hackney, is Kevin Van Dam. But man, this leaderboard is gonna but change a lot, Zona. This is like a Major League Baseball All-Star game with the big guns firing. Denny Brower, Takahiro Omori, and we got a rookie in there, Bill Lowen. This is huge. Well, the former Rookie of the Year, Greg Hackney, is making himself a big name here on Rayburn. He loves it here. So far in this Lone Star shootout, Greg Hackney has led two out of the three days of preliminary fishing. Greg Hackney, originally from the state of Arkansas, now makes his home in Gonzales, Louisiana. Of course, he hasn't been on the Bassmaster Trail long enough to have ever qualified for an Elite 50 series. But boy, he's looking to get into those majors this year. Jerry McKinnis is out there with Hackney. I imagine he's got a report right now. Get oh home. my gosh, we have a full-blown hack attack going on down here in Bear Creek. His first fish is a dandy. Looks From here, it looks like a three, four pound fish. Way to go, Greg, yes. Hey, let me tell you what he's doing. He is throwing this up. Strike King Zero Worm. And uh, a lot of guys rig it up wacky worm by just putting the hook right in the middle of it. But boy, you can tell he is really back there in the brush. So he is rigging his up Texas style, which means he takes the hook and buries it back in the worm and makes it really weedless. And guys, he's probably fishing in uh, three feet of water. He's fishing far spawning fish, although he doesn't see them. Jerry, explain the exact area he's in. There's not a lot of other competitors in there, is there? It, there's nobody else down here. Greg has it all to himself, uh, at least so far. I'm actually looking at a road bed right here, a concrete road that is just barely out of the water and we're on the side of that road way back in Bear Creek now about as far back in Bear Creek as you can go which is about kind of northeast of the takeoff maybe six seven miles away not not very far at all and he's fishing the side of that road bed boy he's rigging back up over there he is a happy Greg Hackney right now guys well he, he told you when you first got there that he would catch a limit in 30 minutes it's been about 30 minutes he's only got one fish 
Yeah, he just got one fish, but he, he missed a fish probably about the size of the one that he just caught right there. And, um, and he also missed another fish. So he's had some bites back there. He's, he's doing okay. All right, before, before he catches any more, give us your prediction for the day. Give us your number one pick. I'm looking at him. Here's my number one pick right here. That was the most original thing I've heard all morning long. Wow, that was magical. You are out in the stars, baby. Guys, I told him if he'd catch a fish, I could leave and go to breakfast, so he went right to work. Full bites. All day, full bites. Full bites. Full bites. That right there is a picture of intensity, Sanders. That man looks like a hunter, not a fisherman. Greg Hackney with the lead, and now over to Dean Rojas. We saw him side fishing a little bit earlier, but now he's changing it up. He's pulling out Kermit the Frog. Rojas is about to go to work. He's going to see a lot of action today. A lot of action. It was 2004, a tour event on the Alabama River when uh, Dean Rojas gave the world a schooling on how to run a frog like Tommy, this. Tommy, not only that, he is the best at this. He's the best in the world. And the biggest thing that you need when fishing this way is patience. You do not get a ton of bites, but your bites are better than average with this bait. Dean Rojas, and still really the only guy who runs the frog full time. Did you see that? Oh my God. Oh, stay on there, baby. Kermie, come on, baby. Come here, Kermie. Come here. Oh, look at that view. Come on. Come here, Kermie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. Oh, man, did you hear that explosion? Oh, look at that. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Woo. Oh, Kermit. I love you, buddy. Welcome to the dance. Welcome to the party. Dean and Kermit, the dynamic duo, starting the dance here. You ready for some bass spotter action, Mark Zona? I'm ready, man, but I'm going to tell you something. About two or three more bass like that, Rojas blows this thing out. Absolutely. Well, it's bass spotter time. Of course, we did it last time. We got bass. We're outfitting them with radio transmitters. We're letting them loose in the lake to let you know how these fish move around during the course of the tournament. Jerry McInnes is out there. He's got our two bass spotted. He's out there where it looks nasty, but he's warm and toasty. I got your toasty, guys. <laughs> it's a little raw out here right now. Hey, stop. Time out. No fishing for about 90 seconds. And let me, let me tell you about uh, uh, two fish that we're following today. One I'm calling Big Sam. It's actually Big Samantha. It's about a five or six pound female that was caught right here on the very first of March, almost three weeks ago, uh, on a rattle trap in about five feet of water. We tagged her, released her. She went off the end of the point, uh, pretty good little ways, dropped off out there in 18 feet of water and sulked up and stayed there for several days. About the time the guys started practicing now, uh, Big Sam moved from that point all the way back in the middle of this drain. Again, in fairly deep water, probably 10 feet of water, and the water temperature at that point was 62. Now it's really starting to get right. From that point, she, boy, she took a pretty good run. Uh, probably the two football fields away from that spot and probably fell in love with a, with a male on the end of that point and has been there all through the tournament in about five or six feet of water and the water temperature out there is 63, 64 degrees. It's just right to be spawned. I am shocked that nobody has caught Big Sam yet because fishermen have fished around her for several days now. But guys, the interesting thing that I see here is that during this whole period, the barometric pressure has been real steady, either, either steady or rising just slightly, except one day, the very day we caught that fish, the barometric pressure was dropping. The rest of the time it's been very steady. She only bit when the barometric pressure was dropping. I don't know what that says, guys, but I think it's interesting. How about that? You writing this down, Zona? Oh, I'm writing this down. I'll tell you what I'm writing down. Jerry McInnes is the Jacques Cousteau of the bass fishing world That's right exactly now. exactly right. Good exactly. stuff right there. Good stuff. Plenty of it coming up. Dean Rojas now, he's extended his lead by just a shade over Hackney and KVD. The big part of that sentence is Hackney and KVD are also in it as well. And will this be the big bass, the pure later big bass of the tournament? All that when we come back. That's a big fish. I think she's over seven.
second stop of the year for the all-new Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series, Rayburn Reservoir, Southeast Texas. And championship day right now and down to our Elite 12 anglers who've made it this far. The three anglers at the top are the ones who are giving us the race right now, Zona. Sanders, I'm tweaked out of my gourd already <laughs> today, man. Amistad was on fire. This is huge. Hackney has lost his lead. All right, everyone, fasten your seat belts. We got a big ride coming up ahead of us. Dean Rojas is the guy who's been providing the fireworks over the last few minutes. Caught a great fish sight fishing early on. Put his big buddy Kermit the Frog on, went to work, caught another good fish, and Dean Rojas has made a slight move. And now, as we watch him, Jerry McKinnis is out there watching him as well. And Jerry, the way he gets that frog way back in there among those willows is almost superhuman. I tell you what, Dean does not throw it in the brush or throw it under these trees. He actually skips it, and he is deadly with it. And here is Kermit the Frog. Actually, here's what Kermit looks like to you and I. And I guess that's what Kermit looks like to a fish. And of course, when a fish jumps up there and grabs it, he exposes these hooks and he goes into action right there. And guys, I'm actually above the Highway 147 bridge on an, on an island. And, and uh, uh, Dean has been fishing this spot all week long because it has giant willow trees. Look at this willow tree behind me. And again, he tries to skip old Kermit back in there. He's fishing places, uh, guys, that no one else is fishing. He's got pretty heavy line, and boy, he is getting, man, is he getting back in some really rough stuff. Boy, Jerry is exactly right. The key to this technique is putting that bait where other anglers cannot. But for the people that are at home right now, this is one of the most amazing techniques you can find. You throw it up in there, and you just wait to hear a huge explosion. Four and a half pound lead now for Dean Rojas. He's definitely putting that frog where the big fish are. But right now, we got to show you Kelly Jordan because he's got a good fish on. Take a look at that one. And Kelly Jordan, who knows how to catch the big fish, especially this time of year. Take a look at the one he brought to the weigh-in stand on day one of this tournament. Eight pounds, three ounces so far. That's the Purilator big bass of this event. together for Kelly Jordan out of Mineola, Texas. Back over to Greg Hackney, came into this final day with so much confidence, but right now sitting in second place, struggling to get something good going. God, what is the deal? I seen that big joke. Hey, what is the deal? I seen him come smoking off the tree and just bump it. I'm gonna change. I'm, I'm sick of that. They're biting weird today. God, I'm gonna catch him. Figure out how to hurry up. The guy was like, man, that's a good one. <laughs> he got it. I never touched him with the hook, that's a good thing. He bit again, I'm gonna catch him this time. Spit it out. Got him. Uh-oh, the dog back in the hunt. I, I gotta have some big ones, man. I don't wanna get beat. I hate to get beat. <laughs> I mean, it hurts my feelings to get beat. Oh, man. Greg Hackney has plans for this big day on Lake Rayburn. Doesn't want to get beat. You heard him right there. So he goes to work over the next 30 minutes. He gets himself a limit. He definitely got the limit. That'll give him confidence. But these are not the size bass that got him to this point. He needs four pounders, and he needs about four more of them. It's number five. That makes me feel a little better. I'm a sore loser. I'll be the first to tell you. Dude, I'm out here to win, man. Oh, I, you know, you hear those people, I just, you know, if I can just make a living, man, I could care less making a living fishing. I can fun fish at home. Dude, I'm out here to win. I'm serious about it. You know, if I don't win today, I feel sure it'll be my fault. <laughs> I don't have anybody to blame but myself. We are seeing Greg Hackney at his most intense. He's come out smoking in 2006, got himself the top five finish last time at Amistad. You can tell he means to win here at Rayburn. And when we return, Kevin Van Dam will definitely regret this fish. Not only that, Tommy, rookie Bill Lowen, he still might have a punch left in him. All that coming up. the Sidgo Bassmaster Tournament Trail, and this is it. The all-new Elite Series, about 100 of the greatest bass anglers in the world, fishing the greatest bass tournament waters in the world. This is the Lone Star Shootout, stop number two of this young season, presented by Triton Boats. 
on Rayburn Reservoir in southeast Texas. 12 anglers left on this final day, but those three names in the top are the ones who are bringing the fireworks already. We've had five lead changes and five more hours of fishing left to go. Greg Hackney has the lead, Z, but how long can that hold up? I thought at the beginning of this morning, Greg Hackney could blow this tournament away. Right now, he needs to worry about Dean Rojas and his little pet. His little pet, his little buddy there is an artificial amphibian <laughs> by the name of Kermit. There's Kermit the Frog right there, and with that fish, Dean Rojas will now tie Greg Hackney for the lead. That's number four. Dean Rojas has admitted he has never won a major tournament with that frog, but has had tons of top tens with it. At this point, I have to ask you, Zona, how many bass in Rayburn Reservoir actually depend on frogs as part of a balanced diet? Tommy, who doesn't depend on frogs, man? That's a point well taken. Thank Dean you. Rojas says he's never won with the frog. He hasn't had a win since 2001. That was down at Lake Toho when he set all yes. the records down in Florida. Oh, I took a swipe at it one time. I missed it. Number five. These little sort of five, but we'll take it. Rojas back in the lead right now. Kevin Van Dam trying to climb back on top of the leaderboard. One of the keys to this is that the shad are just up early in the morning. And clouds like this, it prolongs it a little bit. But I know I got one shot with all the other tournament boats around to fish these places. So I'm trying to hit all my good places early, but not, and not leave any big ones. So there's a bunch of fish right here. There's a good one. Tommy, this is great stuff for people at home. If you notice, the top three guys all have different techniques. Hackney, a worm, Rojas, a frog, Van Dam, a spinnerbait. Dude, that is awesome. Is it awesome because it makes it such a special fishery that you can do all three things and still have a shot at winning the tournament? No, I, what it shows is how versatile these guys are as anglers. Kevin Van Dam with the spinnerbait on right there. He continues to catch these fish on Lake Sam Rayburn. He says the key, the size of those blades right there. You mentioned that earlier. But Kevin Van Dam will live to regret what happened on oh day number boy. two. When you catch that many fish, well, you're going to have accidents. And boy, this is well, a major league accident. Thank heavens that Rod did not slip out of his hands right there and go back in the drink. Amistad style. Well, Kevin Van Dam, that's a five pounder right there. Would you not say, Zona? Now, I'm going to tell you, that fish right there by the end of today could cost him the event. Take a look at our leaderboard right now. The Lone Star Shootout, it's Dean Rojas with a two pound lead over Greg Hackney and Kevin Van Dam kind of losing touch with the leaders right now. You know what, Kevin Van Dam's wheels are definitely coming off. He was catching big bass every morning that were big. Today, no big ones. The man from the Federation Championship earlier this year, Bill Lowen. As we stated, he took over the lead in the Rookie of the Year race, but right now he's actually trying to win this event. But you think he's a little nervous fishing against Van Dam, Hackney and Rojas? When I fish a tube, I like to kind of snap it and make it snap up and fall straight back down. It's just kind of reaction bite. Look at all that vegetation, all that buck brush, all those willows back there. There's a lot of places to catch a bass, but there are a lot of ways you can get a bass pinned up back there. Tons of heavy cover, and the biggest thing is when you catch one of these bass, you have wow. to get them out of the thick stuff. Right now, you can see Bill Lowen has definitely got his hands full. Bill Lowen from Cincinnati, Ohio. It's his rookie season out here with the big boys. Boy, he desperately well, needs this fish. Tommy, he is going into there right now like a panther, kind of like a minx, you know what I mean? He's agile like a mountain cat. All right, let's start being kind to this rookie right here. He's in a predicament right there that he's got to extract himself from. He's got to get that bass. And he needs to be- putting himself in Lake Rayburn. He needs to be careful, Tommy, is what he needs to be. Down. Oh no! Good heavens! <laughs> All right. He's hooked in the mouth. <laughs> you get all that? <laughs> That's good stuff, right? I quit. You didn't see that, did you? That's gonna be on TV. 
I am calling him the grizzly bear. He went in there with that paw, racked him out, man. That was beautiful. And endeavors to Bill Lowen, we are not going to show that one on TV, but good for Bill right there. Now to our Bass Spotter technology, Jerry McInnes, with our two fish that we have the radio tracking devices on, Big Sam and Little Sam. He spotted one of them now. Yeah, I gave you a pretty good report on Big Sam a minute ago. Actually, Big Sam moved Boy, maybe three quarters of a mile during the time we uh, we tracked him. Little Sam is just a pocket over back here in Five Fingers, and he has been very close to the bank for several days. As a matter of fact, Charlie Weir on one day was right on him, and, and it seemed as though Charlie was sight fishing. I can't imagine him not seeing Little Sam because Little Sam's been in a lot of two or three feet of water. Right now, today, for some reason, I am on top of Little Sam right now, and, and he's out here in about 10 feet of water, way off the bank for some reason. I imagine the weather has something to do with that. And again, I want to tell you that we caught these fish the very first of March, the first day of March, on a rattle trap with the barometer really falling on that one particular day. Listen to, listen to Little Sam out here. How about that, guys? The guy reminds me of Richard Dreyfus and Jaws right now, T. The technology is driving this show in a big way right now, but we have also got a terrific race going on. Look at that leaderboard constantly changing. And when we come back, we'll check out some other notables who are in the top 12. And hey, how about Bill Lowen? That big bass got him fired up. He goes on a rampage. That's all when we return. <laughs> Cinco Bassmaster Tournament Trail, this is it. The Elite Series, the 100 greatest anglers in the world, fishing the greatest bass fishing lakes in the world. Second stop of our regular season, Rayburn Reservoir, this bass fishing mecca in Southeast Texas. It's the final day. We're down to 12 finalists on this final day, but the three names at the top of the leaderboard are the ones who are lighting it up. Kevin Van Dam, although he's fading just a little bit, but right now, Greg Hackney, Dean Rojas, really putting on the big fight. Big time horse race right now. It's coming down to three guys, but let's talk about some guys that did not make the Elite 12. Aaron Martin, where is he at so far this year. Edwin Evers, who had such a great tournament last week at Lake Amistad, did not Tommy, make it. A lot of guys thought that was the guy to win this event. What about Mike Iaconelli? Double 13s. Twice in a row he's been 13th place. Iaconelli has stated he wants to make Angler of the Year this year, so he's kind of staying in that race. Skeet Reese, he fumbled out of the top 12 in this one. Terry Big Show Scroggins, everyone had high hopes for him this year. He hasn't really gotten it going so far in 2006. But our Elite 12, John Murray right now sitting in 12th, has caught a ton of bass today. <laughs> Just not the size he's looking for. Denny Brower getting his fishing back in gear this year. That's two money cuts made in a row. He's fishing farther away than anyone else. So what about Alabama's Tim Horton? He was another guy that by the final day was just running out of big fish. Takahiro Amori loves this part of the country. He's done well up the road at Toledo Bend. Was looking to do well here, but fades a little on that final day. What about one of the Bass Tech guys getting involved hey. in the business this week? Stephen Browning admitted Greg Hackney really oh, helped him in this oh, event. John Cruz, only 27 years old, but he's already a veteran with the Bassmasters, has had a great tournament, slows down a little on the final day. Yes, sir. And this guy right here, Mark Tyler, made a huge move on day three. Another guy with another technique, throwing a little topwater chugger all day. And Tommy, that's the great thing about this event, different techniques. If you're watching this at home, you've got to be oh, learning yeah. something. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Wall of that thing. Come here. Come here. He swallowed it. That good fish moves Mark Tyler up into fourth place. Mark Tyler, who still holds the record for biggest bass ever caught in Bassmaster competition, 14 pounds and nine ounces. And what will it take for this guy to get it going again? I guarantee you he's looking for a 14 pounder right now. See, I, I think this is the area. It seems to have some grass out in there. It's a little bit deeper. It has some grass out in the, in the flat there. And
Another one for Kevin Van Dam. Kevin Van Dam with all the momentum at the end of the 2005 season caps it off by winning the Classic. First one out of the gate this year. Amistadi fades on the final day. That was disappointing to him. Kevin has got to catch bigger fish than that. It's going to take four pounders to beat Hackney right now. Check out Bill Lowen, though, man. The rookie is actually swinging at the big guns. Bill Lowen started his year this year fishing in the Federation Championship down in the Harris Chain of Lakes in Florida. As a matter of fact, led that tournament going into the final day. He faded on the final day there. Here, he's moving on. Man, this guy is good. That'll work, huh? Awesome. Mark Tyler had knocked Bill Lowen out of sixth place. He catches that good awesome. one, and he's awesome. back, moving up the board. He's back in sixth. I'm heading that way, aren't I? Oh, I don't know what I've got in there, probably. Not much. Gosh, there was a good one right there. See that boiler right at the end of the stump? This rookie has caught on to a huge technique right now that nobody else is doing. He is swimming a jig. A jig is totally known for throwing it out, letting it get to the bottom. He's fishing it just like a spinnerbait, throwing it out, reeling it straight in. Working for Bill Lowen. His shirt says, get serious. He's getting serious. He's moved all the way up into fourth place. John Cruz also cracks the top six on our leaderboard. Now the man trying to make it happen. The man trying to put this one in the win column for Greg Hackney. Here he comes. I got a big one now. Oh! Maybe fix the deal again. Oh man! I seen him come ten foot to get it. I'll stay here till I catch him. I got to have him. Oh, it just weirds them out when they do that. Get the worm up. Oh, he got it. Got him. Oh god, he is big. This is unbelievable right now. Hackney can be yet another lead change. I I'm starting to tweak out like last week, Sanders. Get you some of that. Get you some of that. <laughs> Look at there. Put one in. Take one out. A freaking prize fighter. <laughs> Just keep grinding. Man. When it was, I was like, go ahead and get him because that last one, you know, did me that when I was gonna let him have it. He spit it out and I'd throw back and catch him. Two bites, two bites. Two bites. Man, that don't seem like as many fish as I've caught this week. That'd be nothing to that. Well, ain't nothing but a step for a stepper. How can you not wow. keep watching this guy right here? Greg Hackney has shifted it into a whole other gear. He's trying to lock this one down, put the win in his column on Lake Sam Raver. But boy, Dean Rojas is not put away yet. Get these commercials out of the way and bring it, man. That one. There she is. Yeah. Yeah. There ain't nothing but a step for a stepper. Sicko Bassmaster Tournament Trail Elite Series Action Stop Number Two, Rayburn Reservoir in Southeast oh. Texas. And look at this moment oh. ago, Dean Rojas just landed the three and a half pounder that gives him back the lead. He wrestles it away from Greg Hackney, who was on a tear just oh, moments God. ago. Sanders, this is why these guys fish. What a race we have going on right now. And back out on the lake to Greg Hackney. He doesn't know it, but he's one pound behind Rojas now, and time is running short. I need two bites. I'm two bites away from 100 grand. I ain't really too worried about the money. I ain't broke, but I, uh, man, I looked at Issues Trophy at that last one. They nice. <laughs> they bad nice. I'm just in the position and I, you know, uh, I won a fair size tournament here. It's what got me started professionally right here on this pond, you know. And it was in 1998 and it was a regional type deal. And I won uh, 50,000, I think it was like 50,000 here, you know. Young, just it just it was what I needed. I caught some out of my uh, element. You know what I'm saying? I mean, not at home. And so the next year is when I decided to go, uh, at least try to go professional. You know, so 
It's confidence, I think. I won that tournament here, and so I always had a lot of confidence here. Oh, giant. Giant. Stay hooked up, baby. Stay hooked up. Stay hooked up, baby. Stay hooked up. Come here. Come here. What do you think? <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. We just finished the day right here. Seems good enough. And Hackney busts Rojas right in the mouth with that one and regains the lead. You know, the thing about it is now they got to beat me. Got to beat me now. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it ain't going to be no win or lose. It's... That's awesome, man. Greg Hackney now two pounds ahead of Dean Rojas. And Dean Rojas now has come full circle. We saw him start his day up in Julie Creek. We started his day sight fishing. And now he's back there again trying to catch a big bass. This is a critical time of the day for Dean. What do you think it would be like staring down the barrel of a four or five pounder knowing if you catch that bass, you may win $100,000. Let's check out the Sitgo Bass Eye View right now. This is exactly what Dean is looking at. He's looking at a bass spawning. The only thing he has to do, Tommy, is catch it. What's the hardest thing in the world to have patience at? Maybe trying to catch one of these fish off well, the bed when you've got an hour of fishing less than an hour to go. Tommy, it's like looking at a sack full of money. You just need to grab it, man. Dean Rojas now switching from the white bait. He's got something with color on it now. What's going on here? Well, the biggest thing when you're sight fishing is show them a bunch of different too. colors. See how they'll react to one. Sooner or later, you'll find a color that they will react differently. That's when you'll catch them. Yeah. Dean Rojas, the last minute decision to go back to the side right. fishing again. It pays mm -hmm. off. He's tied now with Hackney for the lead. That bass right there for Dean Rojas is the most critical bass of this event. It might have put him one ounce Finally. past Greg Hackney. Final moments oh, of fishing time are approaching quickly. These two anglers, Dean Rojas and Greg Hackney, are running away from the field. It's going to be one of these two guys who puts it away here on Lake Raver. No way in the world these guys can see each other or know what's going on, but they seem to have a sixth sense at this level of the game, and Greg Hackney knows he probably needs one more good fish. Boy, I done got all in here amongst these cypress trees now. <laughs> Look at all these trees. It's like the holy land again. Don't come on, please, Lord, don't let her come off. Please don't let her come off. Please don't let her come off. I just won me a hundred grand. Get you some of that! Get you some of that! Look at the hair. Biggest fish I've caught all week! Man, I've been whacking on them. Whacking on them! You know I just won the tournament. But I ain't through. I ain't through. Almost like I'm poaching or something. Doing something I'm not supposed to. Are we supposed to be on fish right here? I just need me one more. One more. I hate to take a dink up there. Need me a sure enough one of them Rayburn monsters. We saw Greg Hackney catch a good one a few years ago. He said, Godzilla's got nothing on me. This time, I think with this fish, he's going to take the turn. He is the ultimate predator. Greg Hackney's time is now. I just won me a hundred grand. Get you some of that! Get you some of that! The Sitgo Bassmaster Elite Series Lone Star Shootout is presented by Triton Bows. And is brought to you by Sitgo, Triton Boats, Curator, and Berkeley Pure Fishing.
Well, it's a little past high noon, but now's the time we settle the Lone Star Shootout. The crowd is ready to go here at Lake Sam Rayburn. The first angler to the stage from Arizona, the man who's a former Open Championship winner, also a former winner of the Bush Shootout, John Murray. There's one. Ten pounds and five ounces from 12 to second for the moment. Hold that one, by the way. Ten pounds and five ounces. A slow day for John Murray, yet he takes the hot seat. Next up, a man who's a favorite every time they tee it up in Texas, Kelly Jordan. KJ hoping that he can make a run at this thing here today. He needs 10-12 for the lead. Ten pounds and eight ounces moves you to the Ten pounds, two. eight ounces for Kelly Jordan and trying to make a big splash as a rookie. The last time we saw him was at the Federation Championship from Cincinnati, Ohio, Bill Lowen. Bill sits 10 pounds and eight ounces out of the lead. Can the rookie take it to the hot seat? 16 pounds, 10 ounces. 16 pounds, 10 ounces, and Bill Lowen is a big hit. He takes the seat. And coming up next, the man who still holds the record for the biggest fish ever caught in Bassmaster competition, Mark Tyler of Arizona. He needs over 14 and a half pounds. 13 pounds and 14 ounces from 12th to second. Mark Tyler, 13 pounds, 14 ounces. He moves along. Bill Lowen stays in the seat. Coming up next, former Rookie of the Year, multiple tour winner, Tim Horton. Has three tournament wins under his belt with BASS and would love to make it a fourth year in Rayburn. There you go. Horton needs 14.7. He's got 11 pounds and 7 ounces. It's a tough Tim Horton brings in 11 pounds, 7 ounces. Not enough to unseat Bill Lowen. Next up, the legend and the man until the last classic, who is the leading money winner of all time, Denny Brower. Your three fish go nine pounds and four ounces. You sit in fourth place with 59.15. Tough day for Denny Brower. Good to see him in the top 12 again. And Bill Lowen doing a pretty good game of dodgeball right here. He's still in the seat. Next man up, first international winner of the classic, Takahiro Omori. Takahiro came into today in sixth place and he needs 13 pounds and 14 ounces to spoil Bill Lowen's day. 11 pounds and 14 ounces and Takahiro Mori, only 11 pounds, 14 ounces. So Bill Lowen seeing at least a few of his wildest dreams come true. Next up, Virginia's John Cruz. Is 13 your lucky number? I hope it is. It might be 13, 13 to take the lead. 12 pounds and nine ounces, you move to the number three spot. John Cruz, 12 pounds and nine ounces, still not enough to unseat Bill Lowen. Bill Lowen with four anglers left to go as Stephen Browning hits the stage. 13-1 to take the lead. 11 pounds and four ounces. You move to the top five. You're sitting in fourth place right now. How about it? Stephen Browning, 11 pounds and four ounces. And now Bill Lowen is looking pretty serious at this point, but the meat of the lineup is on the way and perhaps the most feared angler in the world. Three-time angler of the year, two-time classic champ, Kevin Van Dam. Kevin Van Dam has rocked the bass fishing world. 12 pounds to take the lead. Bang! 15 pounds, three ounces, and KD. Kevin Van Dam, 15 pounds and three ounces, and he takes over the lead. Bill Lowen has to step down, but what a great week for him. Let's see what Dean's got. And now Kevin Van Dam is going to see if it's good enough to hold up against Dean Rojas, who's had such a great day. Rojas. Two top 12s in our season openers. First Del Rio, and here you are once again on the final day. 11-11, get it, 19 pounds, six ounces. Dean Rojas, 19 pounds, six ounces. He vaults past Kevin Van Dam and has a huge lead over the rest of the field. But his big problem is about to take the stage. Greg Hackney started slow, finished strong. Will it be enough? Your day three leader has been shifted down into 10th place. Hackney shows up with a bag, baby. 16 pounds and 12 ounces to take the lead. Rojas going to be watching those digits awfully closely right now. 16, 12 for the lead. 20 pounds, 8 ounces. 20 pounds, 8 ounces. Greg Hackney wins the Lone Star Shootout. Greg Hackney, who won the last regular season event of 2005, doesn't take long to get going in 2006. Hook it up, raise it up high, and let's do this right. Greg Hackney. Elite Series champion, ladies and gentlemen. Put it together for Team Toyota's Greg Hackney. Taking charge, the Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series Lone Star Shootout champion. I like the way that sounds. Hack I wanted this. I've seen issues at the last one, and I was like, man, I want one of those. Now I got me one. Two things become evident here. Already knew one of them. 
Kevin Van Dam hates to lose. Now we know for sure Greg Hackney likes to win. But I'm going to go out and live here and say we may have the start of a little rivalry between these two, huh? Well, these guys have a little target painted on their exactly. back. This is going to be fun to watch. we got a big list to go through, people to recognize here. And we start with Greg Hackney. Greg Hackney on top of the Angler of the Year race. Look at the other two names, KBD and Dean Rojas. Toyota Rookie of the Year race right now. As I said at the beginning of the show, Bill Lowen out of Ohio. But last year at this time, we started predicting, start talking about Dave Wolak last year. I'm right now looking at Paul Horoski out of Pennsylvania. All right. For the Bush shootout, four bags qualify here. They really caught him here. Two of those qualifying bags belonged to none other than Greg Hackney. The Toyota Horizon Award, most improved angler since last year. Brooks Rogers leading that charge, but look at Denny Brower, Matt, almost improving 100 spots. I know you can't wait for this. The fantasy standings oh, just in. Oh, oh, Jerry oh. McKinnis on top of the heap, 1085. Well. 1018 for Zona, oh. 986 for Sanders. We got a long well, season. Well, you know what? I am no longer sucking the submerged vegetation in my Sanders. <laughs> if you're not into fantasy bass fishing, log on to Bassmaster. Com. Click on community and get yourself started fantasy bass fishing. Uh, now the final chapter of our bass spotter story is the most surprising thing of the day, Mark Zona. You're going to have to see it to believe it All on right. this one. Yeah, man. our bass spotter technology, we got the two fish tagged with the radio tracking devices to show their movements during the course of the tournament. Jerry visited them twice during the show to kind of show how they were moving around. Something really amazing happened on the third day of this tournament. John Cruz is fishing along the bank. He sees a fish on a bed. He reaches in there. He catches that fish. That is one of our tagged fish. That's unreal, dude. The fish that, is taken back yeah. to the way, and John Cruz weighs him in as a legal Ooh, fish. Alphys. He's put in the live release boat. They take him out Alphys. in the lake, release him John alive. They check on this fish two hours later. He's moved a half a mile away. They check on him in the next day. He's moved another half a mile. He's going home, Tommy. In the direction of the Five Fingers. What odds would you give that happening? Well, actually, McKinnis and I talked about this when we were having dinner, and I said, it'll never happen. It's a one in a million. Jerry said, you're exactly right. One in 10 million. Second tournament. Bang. Caught. That's unreal. Fast John eight. Cruz needs to buy a lottery ticket That's right. right he needs now. to get to the track right now. John Cruz caught our fast spotter bass. What a fascinating story. But right now, we got to get to work on our fantasy picks for Santee yes. Cooper. Another raging tournament coming up from South Carolina when we see you next time. Oh, oh my God. Got it. It all be that easy. That's a big fish. I think she's over seven. Yeah! <laughs> this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to Bassmaster.com.